future. Absolutely. All righty then. All righty then. Looks like we are live on Facebook oh, with the uh, with the StreamYard software. Hello, hello, hello. and perfect in, in perfect timing. Here comes our guest today. Tell the folks who we can't wait to join. I know we've got Joey Molland, fellow scouser and international worldwide music star, and I hope he's there. Joey. Yes, he is. Oh, and I'm good. going to hello, darling. Add to hello. You. Hello, Tracy. And there you are. Oh, oh, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> the bespectacled ones. I am bespectacled. Yes, indeed. Very respectable. <laughs> Forget it. Forget it. She hasn't had enough. I haven't had any gin on my cornflakes yet. Exactly. Haven't you? No. Not yet. No, no gin. <laughs> no, I'll, get, I'll, get, I'll get my, uh, my puffed wheat then. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So can you adjust your camera um, down a little bit so we can see? There That's you go, it. so we can see your whole gorgeous fizzog. Fantastic. Totally good. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> there I am. Smashing. There you are. Oh, Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. How are you? We're oh, great. We're fine. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today on T-Flix. And uh, we've been very excited to have you on and talk about not just, you know, all your uh, glories of the 60s 70s 80s 90s and beyond but this new project but oh. let's uh let's go back to the beginning obviously we're all yeah. fellow scousers yeah 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 and well, um how how what was your experience because i know the beetle fans that we'll share this with you know they've never been the jacaranda or the original cavern or tell us a little bit about those days and and sort of how rough and ready it was but you guys still got it done that was great wasn't it the uh yeah. I remember, you know, sagging school and going downtown. And, yeah. uh, you know, and then I found the cabin, you know, just quite by accident, really. I was only a kid. Yeah. And uh, and it was great that you could go in, That's you know, because right. it wasn't a booze up. It was, it was a cup of tea place. No you booze, know what I mean? But yeah. remember that? Remember the soup at the cabin? No, I don't think I ever had the soup. Do you used to sell soup at the at the, at the, oh, uh, at the thing there? Yeah. Coke that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go for a bowl of soup and watch the Beatles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's changed to bits and Bennett. It was great. It was great. I saw all the bands there, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The searchers and all that and the no the nomads. Do you remember the nomads? Yes. They they became like the mojos, didn't they? That's right. You know so I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well you God knows you've changed your band names or the membership. Yeah, sure. I, I looked you up on uh, Wikipedia. Oh, the, and the Google, she called on, it. The Google. Oh, oh yeah. The Google. And I saw that you've been in bands like. I made a list here. But I, I, oh, oh, oh. I forgot to print the page out. Well, yeah. no, I mean, That's you, right. yeah, well, well, the Assassins, wasn't it, first of all? Yeah, the school, I was in a group called the Assassins. Well, that's what we did do, wasn't it, to the tunes. We Probably. killed, we, we killed no, them. You know? <laughs> and I'm not talking about killing it like it's great. You know I mean? No, of course not. So I joined the Assassins there. Yeah, I played the guitar about two years then, you know what I mean? I knew some Buddy Ollie and I knew Shazam, you know, the, uh, yeah. the Zwayne Eddy thing. and yeah. Just knew that a bit of guitar boogie. But I did that at school. It was great. Uh, I was really paranoid. I'm, I'm still kind of paranoid now, really. But uh, it was a lot of fun. And then, you know, I got uh, well. I got thrown out of that school. Uh, oh, so I wonder why. I went back. To, I went back to Baggett Street. <laughs> Baggett oh, Street. Baggett Street. Doesn't it sound like yeah. I like names like Back Pomona Street. Yeah. 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 Little <laughs> Vivian Street. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I was born on Tunnel Road, you know. Oh, were you? Not yeah, yeah. Problem. Right Not there in, in Waver Street, like. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it was uh, some kind of park. What was the name of it? I can't remember. No, I can't it, remember. Waver Tree Park, no? Not Waver Tree Park? No, no, no. It was... Uh, Tunnel Road was in... I can't remember the name of the park, no. Not, not Sefton Park? No, Sefton Park was where we moved to. Oh, Gosh. Gosh. They had light switches and everything in that oh. house. Yeah, it was really amazing. Yeah. I was born on Tunnel Road in the front parlor. Wow. We all were. My mum had like five or six kids there. Yeah. 
Yeah, all in the front parlour. Not all at once, like, but <laughs> I know, hope it, was, not. it was good. Yeah, we good. had those little gaslight things, you know, the mantles and all that. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was, really, it was really like Liverpool, great. Your auntie lived next door. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But there was a sweet shop on the other side. It's that's great. Right, yeah. <laughs> Where you could buy candles and yeah, oil yeah. for the heater and all uh, that stuff. Yeah, yeah it was a knockout. Yeah, we, all had, we all had uh, 312 cousins, didn't we? That's right, yeah. Everybody on the street, really. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was really good. I think we still have, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet you I bet you do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Or, or people uh, claiming uh, to be McCartney's anyway. Yeah, you know? yeah. 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 Get a few true. letters, do you? <laughs> yeah. One or two. Every, every third person yeah. on Facebook's called McCartney. Yeah. Yeah. And just when Paul Lanthus is doing a gig, we hear from people we haven't heard from for 20 years. Oh, yeah. Do you think you could get me a backstage pass? Oh, and, yeah. Uh, oh, where, I, where would you like me to send the limo, Chum? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you may not remember me. I knew you at school, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure, sure, yeah, yeah, that's right. So that's when right. you first moved, yeah, it was the Ivies, wasn't it, before Bad Finger? They were, they were called the Ivies. I was never in the band. I joined them, um, I suppose, well, maybe I was. I joined them in November that year. October, November, and uh, they were they were talking about changing the name when I joined, and like that day or the next day, um, you know, I did I did an audition audition for them, yeah. and uh, I got the job, and then like it was like the next day or something, it was Badfinger. The band was called Badfinger, and uh, yeah, it was it was, was kind of weird. It was very coincidental, all that. Yeah, but, yeah, I yeah. Obviously, being a guitarist, you auditioned as a guitarist and got the gig as a guitarist, but yeah. they. They moved the original guitar player over onto bass, didn't they? To make to that's right. Well, Tommy, uh, Tommy wanted a bit more low end drive uh, in the band, uh, and so he decided he was going to play bass and work with the drummer, you know, Mike Gibbons. Boy, yeah. they used to be, they used to get like this about it. You know, <laughs> you know the way it is, bass players and drummers, man. Yeah, uh, yeah, I've heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, Tommy moved over. He's a great guitar player as well, Tommy. You know. Kind of missed him uh, doing that. He, he's one of those guitar players who, who knew what he was going to play. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, he, he heard the notes here and then played it. You know, he was really, really good. I mean, I don't know a lot of guitar players who are like that, you know. Yeah. Tommy was. Yeah, he was really good. Yeah. Uh, how, did, was, how did you first become exposed to music and musical notes and learning? You know, how did you get your hands on a guitar? My bro my brother had a guitar. He had a little band in uh, in Liverpool. Uh, he played with uh, with some of the guys, some of the bands we came to know. Like uh, his band played with them. I mean, but anyway, he had a guitar. He had it off net, and uh, I heard Elvis on the radio one day. I was eleven, and I had I had blue suede shoes, and I swear to God, it was like a switch went off. Yeah. Uh, you know, I stopped thinking about bows and arrows and crossbows and you know things like that. Yeah. But, uh, you know how you can build a good spear when you're a kid in Liverpool. You know, you can do all that. You so, need one. You know, I had an uncle taught me to make arrows and all that, Ooh. light arrows and do all that. Yeah. So we really had the Liverpool training. <laughs> my dad, my dad's brother John. What? Yeah, it was good you were in the Assassins then. That was probably why they took you on. That, that was what it was. I think he put it in my mind. Like. But... <laughs> But it was anyway, uh, I heard Elvis on the radio, Blue Suede Shoes. It was absolutely no. stunning. And for some reason, I went right in the front parlor and got my brother's guitar out and started to learn to play, you know. Um, no. About two years later, still, like I say, I was 11 then, about 13. Uh, I met the other guys and, and we formed the Assassins in school. And then uh, I've got a CD of us rehearsing in, in, the, in the front parlor. And it's like this bunch of little Liverpool kids, you know what I mean? Like, hey, I think it goes like this, you know. And we're all, it's great. It's oh, really no. great. I was made up. A fella bought at me, the bass player, uh, bought at me at the cabin. And uh, yeah, he said, I've got a tape on this. I couldn't believe it. Anyway, it was it was great. And just one thing led to another then, you know. You know. So, would, you you play, would you play like school gigs or do you just do it for a hobby or did you ever actually we, get to play like we never, clubs or anything we never played any gigs in the assassins no we we rehearsed it to church hall in uh, uh maybe and um 
we raised up at the church hall, but that's really all we did. We played a couple of things at, at school. Uh, you know, they'd have the show, a little show, and, you know, talent night or whatever it was. Yeah. And uh, so we'd go on and play around with that. Uh, so what was your first professional what was your first professional like band gig and was it in a, a club or a working man's yeah club? yeah it was in there. i got when i started working i was working a pacific steam navigation company a big shipping line yeah. and i was working in the dock office used to go to town this is when i was 15 and i uh, take the messages from the ships to the oh, office yeah. and then take the messages from the office back to the ships Wow. Anyway, that was my job. I was a messenger boy, bottom of the ladder, you know. Yeah. And uh, anyway, so I'd go around to different places, Wimpy or something like that, go and have a bite of lunch. We had lunch and about it, you remember them? That's right. And, uh, and uh, anyway, so a guy stopped me on the street one day. I'm not kidding. He stopped me on the street. And he said to me, "Are you Joey Molland?" And he oh. knew me. He knew my name. Oh, and uh, I said, "Yeah." He said, "Do you still play the guitar?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "Do you want to come and play with us tonight?" I said, ah, you know, yeah, but, you know, I'm really not, you know. He said, well, come down, you know, whatever, Chuck Berry, whatever. And so I went down and played, and they paid me a pound. Oh, wow. Do you remember where it was? It was at the basement club on Mount Pleasant. Oh, yeah. Uh, right next to the YMCA. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the singer of the band there, the Profiles the band was called, mm. fellow named Pete, Pete Feldman. He uh, he was the uh, songwriter, an actual songwriter in the band. He was the first guy I knew who actually wrote songs, you know. Uh, I had no idea about any of that stuff. You don't, do you? Did you know about oh, that? Yeah. Who knows about that stuff? And uh, Anyway, I played with them for about oh, a year. And during that time, the drummer, a fellow named Pete Wiggins, he's the guy who stopped me on the street. He started taking me to, like, the Blue Angel mm. and, you know, uh, a few places like that and I used to go to the blue and watch a band called the masterminds oh yeah oh yeah and i used to get up with them and play you know they liked the way i played and so eventually the, the guitar player had never left i think he got a better offer as a taxi driver <laughs> <laughs> Is <there more> <laughs> yeah. yeah that's right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so brian brian uh, slater uh he's famous in liverpool slater the roadie like yeah. James Bond, he was a roadie, wore gloves, you know. <laughs> Did he wear a black suit and gloves? He was great. <laughs> like Pat, like Paddy the Plank. Hard as nails, hard as nails. There was a there was a London roadie yeah. called Paddy the Plank, and I once <laughs> I once asked him how he got his name. He just looked at me and said, "Don't ask, darling." Don't. <laughs> Don't ask. Yeah, he had a priceless tap to live. You wanted somebody yeah. beating up. <laughs> do this to their lips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He used to, yeah. Have, he used to send out Christmas cards and to very special close friends. He put his price list in. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Slater the Roadie. So Slater the Roadie. And uh, it was great. Uh, Brian went on all. We, we took him all over the world. It was eventually, I, I got him a job with. Uh, I joined Gary Walker, you know, from the Walker oh, yeah. Brothers. Yeah. I joined, I joined them. Uh, I don't know, sixty-seven. I uh, got a job with him, and uh, I've had loads of jobs. I played with the Mercy Beats for a bit. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You name it, we know. We've looked you up. We've googled yeah. you. I've got, I've got Billy. I've got, I've got Billy Kinsley's Firebird right here. Yeah. Uh, I used it on, I used it on the Bad Finger Records and stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's a great mate of mine. Do you know Billy? Yes. I do, yes. Ah, he's a knockout lad, isn't he? Lovely. He, he, is. Lovely. He, was in the, he was in the documentary Good Old Frida about Frida Kelly. Oh, yeah, yeah, Frida. Yeah, and, um, and, and, and our dear late departed Billy Hatton, who was another lovely Yeah, lovely yeah, guy. yeah. Wow. In the foremost. Yeah. Billy Hatton, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, man. They were good guys, all of them. Yeah, so the, the, all the ones I knew were, were really good. I went round to uh, Griff's house, you know, Brian Griffith. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I went, I went round to Griff's house. I saw him in the big three. And uh, I went round and knocked on his door and asked him to teach me uh, to play the guitar. He said, I'd love to, mate, but uh, I, I don't know what I play. <laughs> and he was an incredible guitar player, but he didn't know what he was playing. <laughs> Just had really good ears and amazing, yeah. amazing player. Yeah. It's the natural. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So fast forward to all all of your Liverpool experience and all of that, and then 
of course, boom, up up pops Badfinger and yeah, yeah. Apple Records and being produced by George Harrison and yeah, yeah, hanging all out. of those things, all of those things are like little miracles happening to me. Yeah. You know, Billy it, uh, turned me on to the Ivies. Yeah. Uh, uh, he said, they're looking for a guitar player, Joe, go see them. Uh, they're really good. Billy wanted the job as bass player when the bass player left. Yeah. He tried to join them. That's how he found out they were looking for a guitar player. Mm -hmm. and that's how I found out. And uh, I, I went down and played a couple of songs for them. They were great. And uh, they got me in the band. Great guys. Pete was a little bit iffy, but Tommy and, and, and Mike, I think, really liked the way I played the guitar. Yeah. So, uh, so they got me in. And then, then it all started. Then I saw George Harrison and so there's John Lennon, you know, heating up, heating up the room, you know, Johnny, when he came in. <laughs> wow. 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 What a thing. I was a big Beatles freak as well. Oh, I mean, yeah. Everybody from Liverpool had to love the Beatles. Yeah. They were so proud. So I proud know. of them. Man, they were so great. And the songs, all those songs they started writing. Yeah, I, know. I mean, I don't think anybody like accepted right? Writing their own songs to. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable, man. They were great. And those two guys sing, and yeah, John, John and Paul, was it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> those two guys singing were unbelievable, man. And there are a lot of good singers in Liverpool. You know that, and I know that. Yes, uh, a lot of great singers, but those two guys could sing, man. Wow. Well, there were the singers, and then there were the Wellers. Do you remember a Yates's Wine Lodge where they'd sit around and sing, and the ones, the old biddies that were on the, <laughs> on the Aussie White who didn't know the words, they just go, well? <laughs> well, <laughs> the well, with you. They'd be singing anyway. Carolina Moon and the well. <laughs> never mind, never mind. <laughs> so, all you people out there should go to Liverpool and have a look. It's uh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. really. Yeah. When Love you it. do, make sure you've got a copy of Madam's new book here, there, and everywhere with the flow codes in it, where you can scan it with your phone and it's. Wow. It takes you to a web page on McCartney.com all about either the cavern or the jacaranda or the Beatles story or whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we've uh, only Ange would write well done. Tour, only Ange would write a tourist guide in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> it's a lot, actually, because people are buying it. So they plan for when they can travel again. Yeah. Really bad, you know? So now, did you uh, ever but did you ever live in London proper or did you just commute from Liverpool? How did that all work when you were recording at Apple? Well, I did when I went, when I joined Badfinger. I uh, I moved in with them. They had a little house in, in Golden Screen. Yeah. Uh, so I moved in with them for a while. And then when I, when I found my girl, uh, Cathy, uh, we moved out and got a little place in Amsterdam Garden Suburb, one of those little cottages. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, it was nice. It was lovely. Yeah, me and Kath, we spent most of our time there, really, and then moved to Kentish Town eventually, oh. uh, which was a bit closer to town. Yeah. And it was, it, yeah, it was nice. It was a great area. We found a pub there with nothing but Louis Saint George, you know, yeah. the board, the board, nothing but that all along the top of the bar. The bar. Couldn't yeah. believe it. So we go in there and have a pint. Give us a couple of bottles of that red, will you? <laughs> <laughs> And they didn't know what they had. Huh? No. Well, no, we cleaned it up. <laughs> we had a lot of good times in Venice, little Venice. Remember those little ferry oh, yes. boats? Lovely. The little Denny kind of barges. Lane. They had a barge, didn't they, there? Denny Lane yeah. Yeah. Aunt, in Little Venice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just came yeah. from Denny. He's doing okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give him all love. Um, yeah, so how, how did it all come about that Badfinger were, like, produced initially by by George. Well, actually, uh, Paul did the first single, didn't he? Come and get it. Uh, he'd right. already he'd already done that with the Ivies when I joined. That's how close it was to being Badfinger. The record hadn't come out, but it was recorded by the yeah. Ivies. Wow. Uh, is that weird? Yeah. Anyway, uh, George, well, they were at records. No matter what was a big hit off, no dice. Mal Evans did the producing on that. Jeff Emmerich, Mal was great, wasn't he? Yeah. Wow. What a sweetheart, man. Yeah, I love I've got him. a great photo. I've got a great photo of him holding my wife, Cathy. And yeah. uh, she looks like a little girl, isn't he? I swear yeah. to God, looks like a little girl. He's got his arms around. He was a big boy. Mal yeah, was a big yeah. 
beautiful photo. And Jeff Emmerich was a it was a dear friend of ours here in Los Angeles until yeah. we lost him a couple of years ago. And yeah. he was still working hard and producing and yeah. You know, it's amazing what came out of that whole Beatles stable, isn't it, really? Yeah. Yeah, man, it really is. It really is. Well, now, Fantastic. didn't you, you play on a couple of George Harrison albums? We played on we played on All Things Must Pass, yeah? yeah. Uh, we played all the acoustics on it for him. I think, yeah. Uh, great, great. We, I mean, I've told that story so many times. <laughs> all the great stars were there. You know, Eric Clapton was there. Yeah. There was the best time I went in the studio. There was Ringo sitting at the drums, you know, doing something, <laughs> doing his song, going, wow, there's Ringo Starr. And then yeah. Eric walks in with his guitar and everything. Plugs himself in, you know, no roadies or nothing. No, no. Plugs himself in, <laughs> comes over, you got any picks? Have you got any plex? <laughs> uh, he's great, he's great. And there's Klaus Vorman, Billy Preston. It was wow. a knockout, it was a knockout. And every day we go down jangle. They put us in a big blue box, they made it special uh, so that we could play acoustics with the band uh -huh. without one, and they could record them, you know. Uh, so we'd climb in this little box. It was great. They shut the door. It was like being a cow or something, you know. There was a space for our heads, like <laughs> it was really weird. George was great as well. George was lovely. Yeah. Come over and play us the song, like, and uh, teach us it. You know, uh, it was just a really comfortable mm. work and work and experience. We did it every day. I couldn't. I didn't talk to these guys. They were like. They were like gods or something, you know what I mean? And I was just completely impressed, you know. Gobs <laughs> oh. I think we'd call it gobsmacked, wouldn't we? Yeah, 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 yeah that's what they'd say nowadays. I was. And uh, I was thinking that you played on Imagine. Yeah, played on John. They called us one night. Uh, John's recording tonight. Do you fancy bringing your guitars over? He wants, oh. you, to, he wants oh. you to come over and play some guitars. We're like... Wow, <laughs> this and this had to car for us and went down to Titanurst. Yeah. And I hung around there for a few hours. There was nobody there. And we were walking around in all the rooms. Knockout was knockout. Just a complete fantasy world, you know. Yeah, absolutely. It really was. I had me guitar like so it was all right. Went in this kitchen with the jukebox there with all the rock records. Yeah. Yeah. We saw some people there and uh, a studio was right behind the kitchen. Good idea that. Huh? <laughs> Yeah. I've made a note in my book about that. <laughs> if I ever have a big mansion, I'll, I'll put my studio near the kitchen. It's great. Toasty the the bottle opener. Exactly. <laughs> but isn't it crazy? Closer to, think, to the bottle opener. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it, isn't it crazy to think that, you know, you there's you sharing the front parlour with five or six kids and everyone in the street, and now here you are walking around Tittenhurst Park Mansion <laughs> with your original instrument over your back still doing what you love and that's that's what i love about music it's such a transitional transformative thing isn't it yeah. doesn't yeah. matter who, where you come from if you've got it you've got it and it, it opens doors like crazy yeah yeah it completes it completes the world you know yeah. it is it's amazing you never know what's going to happen no. i know I, I you know well you just do what you do that's all you know okay. it's fantastic i was on a, um, a music business panel with a very famous uh, music business or internet music entrepreneur who had just sold his business for six hundred and fifty million dollars. Like, he shall remain nameless. Oh. And we were at a music <laughs> mentoring kids, and yeah. um, I introduced myself because I was going to be sitting next to him for an hour and a half. Yeah. And I, just as an opener, I said, "What kind of use music do you like, Michael?" And he said, "I don't like music. I only like money." Oh, oh. I was I like, "What?" Yeah, well, you don't so like music. I requested to be reseated next to someone else. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Didn't want that seeping on me, you know. Wow. I mean, that's like saying I don't like air or I don't like food. It is really weird, though. That's weird. Like music. And money goes, doesn't it? Yeah. Money disappears. Oh, yeah. It's very hard to hold on to it, yeah. you know. Music yeah. stays right with you. Stays what's right that, in here. It's what's great. that lovely old <laughs> scouse saying? If music, the, the Shakespeare... Um, piss take. If, if music be the food of love, then give us a tune on your jam butty. That's why it's hard. <laughs> so obviously, you know, you've maintained those of us who are still alive. You're just, you know, you're a great mate with all of these people. Fast forward to 
now in this latest Mark Hudson production, Be True to Yourself, you've got a couple of special guest stars on this. How, how did that all come about and where did the songs all originate and come from and how, how long did it take to put together? Yeah, wow. Okay, the songs I wrote all, all over, all my life really, all the way back to the 70s, Shine, song on there called Shine. Yeah. We, did, we did a demo of it with Badfinger, you yeah. know, with the original band. So that's how long ago that was. And, I, you know, I've got loads of songs. I write, I get ideas for songs. Yeah. And so I, I write them. And uh, so I had loads. And, and, and I met Mark, oh, I, 10, 12, 15 years ago. Yeah. And uh, we got on really well. He always wanted to get up with me and sing uh, no matter what. You know, yeah. you know, yeah. he's he's a great singer, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so we got to be really good friends. And I wanted to work with a great producer. I, I haven't worked with one since the old days. I've right. done all my own recording. And, you know, because of that, I'm not really satisfied with them. But uh, I kept on, you know, hitting on Mark to produce a record for me. And eventually... 10 years, 12 years into it, he said, do you want to make a record? <laughs> so I broke him down. So I sent him a boatload of songs and uh, he went through them and uh, he took the ideas that he really liked mm. and there were 10 or 12 of them. Um, and uh, he started to uh, fool around with them with the arrangements and maybe throwing a chorus in there or changing the lyric here. Mark likes to write hit records. Right. And yeah. I, I've got about as much idea about making it record. And I'm not kidding you. I, I can make a record, but, but I don't know what it is. And I, I don't know how to make it. Uh, Mark had the gift of it. Um, and so he, he, came in, he came in on the songs with me and uh, helped me finish them all up. And, uh, and then he started to get the musicians together. Uh, he got the whole thing together, the whole band. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it was great. He took over like a real producer does. Uh, we went into New York. We recorded two songs, uh, The Ballad, um, Loving You, and uh, one of the other ones, uh, I can't remember. Oh, I Don't Want to Be Done With You. Okay. We recorded those two songs just to see if we could make a record together. Because yeah. it's a bit, it's a bit like that, you know. And, uh, you know, like marriage, you, you, it's a bit like a temporary marriage because you're really living in each other's pockets. Yeah, you know, yeah, and uh, uh, yeah. So could we make a record? So we found out we could, and, uh, and then it took a little while to get the money because we wanted to do it in a real studio right. with real musicians, and right. you got to pay everybody. Uh, so we needed money to do it. So we raised a bit of money. A uh, great guy, Jeff Miller, came in and, and helped us with that. And uh, next thing you know, we were at Mission Sound in, in Brooklyn, in Brooklyn, New York. Great studio. Uh, all these musos showed up. And uh, it was lovely, man. We started to work on the songs. Yeah. And they were enjoying the songs. It was great to see the musicians uh, get into the song with you, uh, enjoy it, and enjoy the difference in it. You know what I mean? Right. And, uh, they were all, I was really, they really boosted me up, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, oh, I love this, you know, this is great, you know, uh, really good. Uh, um, validation and, validation and, is never a bad thing. I mean, I, I very first became aware that the project was in the works actually through a Julian Lennon social media post. I think it was on Instagram. Oh, and I was like, oh I've got to go looking for that because Julian, yeah, yeah. Julian was tweeting all about it. Um, yeah. Yeah. He, came, he came along and sang, uh, sang right. some harmonies. I'd met him when Veloc came out. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I just made a point of going and see him. I liked the record. I wanted yeah. to go see him sing and play, and he did a great job. It was great. Oh, yeah. And then I got to meet him, went backstage, said hello and all that. And uh, he was lovely. And then I didn't see him all those years. And then Mark was a friend of his. I didn't know about that. And uh, it was Mark who talked to him and said, hey, you know, we're doing a record. You know, I want to come and do something. So he did. Um, and it was the same with uh, Mickey Dolenz. Yeah. I'd been touring with Mickey. Uh, we did a Beatles tour last year. Right. We were going to do more. We were going to do more of it this year, but uh, the, the, the pandemic, like. Um, anyway, so so uh, we gave him a call, and he said, "Yeah, great, great." And he came down in LA, came to the studio. Mark's got that place on yeah. Santa Monica Boulevard. You know, it's just up the road from us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he came in and did it. Jason Sheff came down. Chicago guy, 
Well, yeah. he's, an, he's an astounding singer, man. Yes, he is. And you know, his, his dad was Elvis's bass player. Did you know that? Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow, and the circle closes. I was constantly shaking his hand. <laughs> and the circle closes from you hearing Elvis on the radio when you were 11, you see. That's it, yeah, yeah. Unbelievable, man. Yeah. That's fantastic. Uh, uh, oh, you know, Musos are great the way they'll do that. That's right, yeah. You yeah. know, they'll, they'll, they'll come and play with you anywhere. They don't really wear they, they just love to play. And, you know. Angie, was, uh, Angie was quite offended you didn't ask her to play the spoons on it, you know. Well, I they didn't know about that. You never told me that. Well, you've got your secrets. You do. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm smiling on the spoons. Yeah, I smell spoons solo. Well, you would have liked my Uncle John. <laughs> <laughs> So your next record should be a Bring Back the Spoon solo featuring, featuring. yours truly. Okay, we'll do a special for you. Okay, <laughs> yeah. um, and now the record is out, obviously, where all fine records can be sold, uh, downloaded, Amazon and iTunes yeah. and all of that, right? Yeah, yeah. So I would encourage all of you uh, Beatle fans and Badfinger fans and Joey Mullen followers to go and uh, check out Be True to Yourself. It's really a great, well-crafted record you can just tell the love it was made with when you when you listen to it it's oh, we, we had a really good time and thanks so much for saying those nice things about my record no, it's it's awesome. mark did a great mark did a great job for us and my voice held up my voice wasn't all croaky i was really happy uh no it's great it's great to have it it's gotten great reviews all over as it should and, uh, tell yeah, yeah. when you listen to a record that's all digital samples and MIDI and electronic stuff. It just, it feels tinny and flat and cold and whatever, but you can really sense the, it's all, your, your record almost smells, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> it's almost got a, its own kind of aura and its own scent to it, because you can just feel the groove and the musos and the love and everything. It's really a yeah. great record. Yeah, fantastic, man, thanks. You, you had Steve Holly too, didn't you? Steve Holly played drums, man. Yeah. Oh, no. great. Woo. You yeah, weren't off, tremendous. You were not off and about, were you? Not at all. Not at all. These guys don't, you know, you can't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You can't. These guys were great. Great guitar player, Jay Shepard, Paul Santos, Benny Harrison played the piano, yeah. the keyboards, B3s, and things like that. Yeah. Little, little old well, let's say, you know. Uh, yeah. It was great. It was great. All real stuff. Uh, string bass. Uh, yeah. uh, he, he came. He, this guy came and played the strings. Uh, uh, I can't remember his name. I'm sorry. I do apologize. But a monster, a monster player. He does like Beyonce and all these people. Wow. Uh, he's a fantastic player. And the the horn player had his own. Uh, he's got his own horn band. Wow. Uh, he goes out and does shows. Wow. He came down and did all the horns. Uh, just yeah, right. uh, just a fantastic uh, yeah. thing. And like yeah. And it wasn't a it wasn't a big booze up or anything. No. We really we really worked every day. Uh, we worked from opening to close. You know what I mean? It was uh, yeah, it was get to it. It was lovely, and it yeah. turned out good. Mark did the vocals, the harmonies and stuff are astounding. Right. I know Julian and uh, everybody. You know Mickey did. They all did really good harmony for me. I think the vocals sound spectacular. Yeah, they yeah. really do. Oh, they really they, do. You know, the trick is you can get all of this great performance on tape. But then you've got to mix it and master it and boost it. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's what, I don't think the average uh, person in the street, if you stopped them and said, what does a producer do? Produce what? I mean, it's really a very complicated, talented, you know, area. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You you know, like, you know, the, the focus of these guys. Oh, yeah. I mean, the focus is, is all, you know, Mark was incredible. Yeah. I mean, he's a nutcase. You know what he's like. Oh yeah, you know, he's he's gone. He's out to lunch most of the time. But, well, you know, you'd never oh, know. You'd never know by the color of his beard, would you? Yeah. <laughs> Not unusual at all. Honestly, God, he makes up for me. <laughs> so what's uh, as, let's let's fast forward to when this uh, crazy coronavirus has gone bye bye because it's it's out of here. Human yeah. race will win, and music will win. Um, what's next? Are you planning any more of these collaborative tours with like Jason Chef and Mickey Dolenz? Are you yeah, gonna, yeah, you we gonna... are. Yeah, uh, we're gonna do, I think we're gonna do Let It Be or something like that. Um, uh, we're gonna do a Beatles show. Um, it's fun doing those, everybody yeah. knows them, and you, you know, you got to play them the way they go. 
Oh, yeah, it's, it's not a jam session. You know right. I mean? so, we had a, we had a, I think we all had a lot of fun. I played with Todd Runken. He oh, produced he produced Baby Blue and he came on and sang it with me during the show. Wow. Which is really kind of a cool thing, you know. Uh, oh. the, the gigs are beautiful. So yeah, I plan on doing them and I plan on doing uh, Joey Molland acoustic shows, uh, right. which I do. And I do uh, I've got a little band we go out and do a bad finger concert. Uh, oh. so so we'll keep on doing those things. Um you know, I love to play, I play every day if I could. It'd be fantastic. Yeah. And you you were smart with the with the touring schedule when you moved to Bang Slap the middle of the country because you're never too far from either coast, are you? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. That's well, that's another thing. My wife lives here. Oh, my wife did live here. She passed away two thousand nine, but yeah. uh, this is where she's from, so that's how I ended up here. And you're yeah. right. It's it's in the middle of the country. I can just go here and there and everywhere. Yeah. And there's direct flights to like Amsterdam from here. Yeah. And, oh. and London and all that. So it's it's perfect for the traveler, yeah. It's That's great. Right. Yeah. And yeah, they, yeah. they also have the uh the smarts to they Minneapolis has figured out the weather and women like me who like to go shopping, they've built all these tunnels across the street so you can <laughs> never have to go outside, do you? Yeah, that's great, isn't it? What a great idea. You can walk from one, one end of town to the other without going outside. It's brilliant. That's, that's right. That's right. That's I, lo I like it, man. Well, I, I remember with great fondness the night that Martin and you and I and Phil Solom from the Rembrandts yeah. went out and uh, had some fish and chips and tipped a few. It was fantastic. <laughs> so good. Yeah, it was a couple, maybe maybe a couple more than a few, as I recall, but it was... Uh, Right. It, was cold. Cold. <laughs> it was cold. You need to keep warm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was a Brits, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah great. A lot, great. lot of fun. A lot great. of great times. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been absolutely a, just a joy to reconnect. I wish I could give you a hug, but I'd have to put my mask on. So. <laughs> it's not <laughs> the same, is it? No. So very much. And uh, tell all the folks, you know, where they can find you. are on Facebook, obviously. Um, are you on any of the others that they want them to go find? Do you well, we're on some of the video channels. I've got. I made a couple of videos for it. We're going to be starting another one this week, actually. And right. uh, so I'll be doing up. Yeah, yeah. All all that stuff is available <laughs> everywhere. I hope. I hope. Oh, it is. <laughs> yeah. And, no. uh, it's again. It's we're picking up radio stations yeah. just like the old days. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just, I'm doing interviews for all over the place on Australia, New Zealand, and England, and everything. Nice. Europe. So, with a bit of luck, a bit of luck, we'll sell a few records. It'd be great. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah. Encourage us to write more songs, you know. That's okay. that's the name of the game, my yeah. friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Stay, stay warm up there. Have a have a hot toddy of Mrs. McCartney's teas with a drop of summer in it. Will do. Will do. All of our Definitely. Yeah. Thanksgiving. Hey, listen, let me say thanks to you guys for having me on. Oh, really my. appreciate oh, it. It is great to hear the way you talk and everything. You know, it's uh, it's really nice. Yeah, we don't talk you. like you do, don't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, don't we? You know what I mean? <laughs> we, should, we should have actually, we shouldn't have called this show T Flicks. We should have called it Teresa's so we could say, Tara Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa. <laughs> Teresa. <laughs> See <you> through <laughs> the window. All right. I'll Thank see you, you next so week. All right. And everybody, make sure you go get Be True to Yourself, the fabulous new Mark Hudson produced Joey Mullen record. You must have it in your collection. It's You'll love fast. it. Yeah. Thanks very much. All right, right guys. Bye bye. Bye bye, bye, -bye my loves. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Sweetheart. See you again, I hope. Absolutely. Right, so. <laughs> Teresa. See ya. Up the reds. <laughs> oh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to end the broadcast and of course now i'm the digital demon i can't figure out how to get out of here so um when i do i will um <laughs> it says look up broadcast all right well, well i didn't record you know, that i was going to record it did you record it um it'll go it'll go on tflix very shortly soon and then i can send you the link and or the file i can dropbox you the file so all right all right, Therese. All right. Solve I'm, those problems. Solve the problems. That's what I, will, I, I will indeed. I will talk to you you're later. Both, you both look lovely, incidentally. Okay. I should say. <laughs> All right, darling. Well, we'll see you soon, and I'll send you the link. Tara, love. <laughs>